Welcome back to another episode of Rated. In today's video, I will be discussing my top 10 war books and I'll be giving my opinions on why I place them in a certain position and ranking in my top 10. So before we start this video off, these are my pure and my opinions, so feel free to disagree with them. Without further ado, let's get on with my top 10 best war books that I've read so far. In 10th position, I have Hiroshima by John Hershey. Now, Hiroshima by John Hershey was an amazing book, but the only downfall was the, of the book was that it gave a really broad expect, uh, uh, perspective. So to a certain extent, this broad perspective is good, but in many times, it proved to be vague. And this book, Hiroshima by John Hershey, did not zoom in on a, uh, on a particular person's perspective and opinions. So it was more vague and general. And that's the only reason and solely why I put Hiroshima by John Hershey in 10th position. In 9th position now, we have Private Peaceful by Michael Murfogo. So, uh, uh, disclaimer first. I really like Michael Murfogo's writing and I really enjoy it. He's one of my favorite authors. But, this was not his best book and I'll tell you why. It's because the scene changes in this book Private Peaceful were a bit abrupt and I found it quite confusing because due to the abruptness of the scene changes, some parts of the story I didn't really get it. It was a bit more, you know, like, oh, from one scene, from someone doing something to another completely out of the blue scene. So that's why, that's the sole reason why I put Private Peaceful in ninth position, even though the writing in the book was really, really, really good. In eighth position, we have When Hitler Stole the Pink Rabbit by Judith Kerr. So this overall was a really great book and it has so many great perspectives in the book. And it was one of the most ch challenging choices I had to make putting it in my 8th position. Now, why I had to put it in my 8th position was because the plot and story seems very rushed and hurried. And even though it had great perspectives, the story seems rushed and because you're, con you're constantly going in that high pace uh, play when you're reading and you're like, oh, one scene, two scene, three scene, four scene, five scene. Not uh, some ups and downs, it's fast throughout. So that makes it more uncomfortable for the reader. And that's the reason why I put uh, When Hitler Stole the Pink Rabbit in my eighth position, though it was a really great book. Now in seventh position, we have The Diary of a Young Girl and Frank. So why I had to put this in 7th position, though it was an extremely difficult choice to put it in 7th position, is because I really enjoyed the story overall. It was a different writing style, completely different. But the downfalls of this writing style was, it made the story more cracked up, like different scenes, and it was not coherent enough. So that cracking up was the downfall of it because it's not smooth enough. Hence making it very, like, you know, rigid and very hard to read at some points of time and though it had these problems it was an amazing book giving a first-hand detailed experience of her life at the camps now in sixth position we have the boy in the strip pajamas by john boy now there's no apparent reason why i put this in the sixth position because it was an overall really great book and it has so much coherency so much connection and so much feeling and emotions packed inside that book and it was overall a great writing style and the ending was really emotional the only reason why i had to put this in the sixth position was because the books after that were amazing just way better than uh the boy in the strip pajamas but still this was a really really great book and i also recommend you to read this book now in fifth place i have all the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. So overall, this is also the same as The Boy in the Street Pajamas. There's no apparent reason, but the only reason is that though this was a really, really great book, such a compelling book, such interesting book, and so coherent, the only downfall was that it's only showcased one message, 
only one main message. As a reader, I wanted to know more things and learn more key takeaways from this book, but this book only had one key takeaway, which is to see the light in all of the darkness, which is such a compelling message, though this had only one takeaway, which is the only downfall for this amazing book, hence me having to put this in fifth position. In fourth position, now we have Codney Verity by Elizabeth Wine. Now in Singapore and many secondary schools, this book is done for literature almost every year and it's really, really popular book to study on for literature. Why? It's because these have three takeaways, which are friendship, courage, and betrayal between friends. And it's a story about World War II. So this is very relatable to most people, which is the greatest part of the book because since you're able to relate to someone betraying you, that is the greatest part of the book, which makes you feel like you're inside the book and you feel what the uh, character feels, which is why I put this book in my fourth position. In third position, we have the well-known Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. This book is packed with so much emotion and strength and a really, really, really good message, which I won't expose. And this book really wants you to feel like you're living inside and you're being the character itself. And the good thing about this book is that it is a real true life story, which makes it way more mesmerizing to the audience and hence being in my top three in third place. Now in second position, we have a really, really famous book that I've reviewed before. It's called The Complete Story of Sadako Sasaki by Su Dikiko, Disiko, and Masahiro Sasaki. This book is so, so good, and I really recommend you to read it because this book is a story from the perspective of a young girl called Sadako Sasaki about life after her atomic bomb and the experiences from the child's perspective, which, which made this book really, really great. And it's so pure and insightful in its experiences and opinions throughout her story in the book. And I really, really recommend you to read it. And it was such a great book. And hence, I put it in my second place. Now, last but not least, the moment all of you have been waiting for. My number one book for war books is Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand. Now, why is this book my number one? Is because it shows the story of Louis Zamperini as a prisoner of war in Japan. And this story shows a lot of hurt and a lot of and forgiveness. That's the main message of the book. Forgiveness is to forgive someone who may have committed so many things on you like hurting you, demoralizing you. Though this may happen, you have to forgive and move on, which is the greatest message of Unbroken. We, why? Unbroken. It says from the name itself, I am not broken after my experiences because I learned how to forgive, which is the greatest part of this book and hence making me put this in my number one position, for, I mean my first position, and hence concluding my top 10 greatest war books that I've read so far. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button and also, i really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you'll be notified when I drop a video. And feel free to disagree in the comments because these are just purely my thoughts and opinions on how I appreciate this, these books and every person appreciates books differently. With that, see you again for another epic episode of Break Tip.